Hi, Year 9. Today we're going to be talking about the English language paper one, which you would have been studying at the end of Year 9. So today you're going to be learning about paper one. You will also be given an overview of the paper. You will learn how to manage your time in the exam. You'll learn about the type of questions you'll be asked. And you'll also learn how each question requires you to use a different skill. So the paper itself is one hour, 45 minutes long. Section A is reading, questions one to four. Section B is writing, question five. You should spend eight minutes reading the extract. Then question one should take you around four minutes. Question two, 12 minutes. Question three, 12 minutes. Question four, 24 minutes. And question five, 45 minutes. You will always be given a fiction extract to read. And today we're going to be looking at an extract from the novel of Mice and Men. Question one, you were always directed to a part of the source. So today we're going to be looking at lines one to seven. The question will always begin list four things. Today we're going to be looking at listing four things from this part of the text about the landscape. And as you can see, if you read through this extract, there is there are plenty of things you can write about the landscape. And I've highlighted them in green for you so you can just have a look at that. And I also want to reassure you that the exam board, they are not trying to trick people. So four things means that you will get four marks. Question two. You were then directed to another part of the extract. So today we're looking at lines 13 to 24 of the source. The question will always begin, how does the writer use language? Today we're looking at how does the writer use language to describe this landscape and setting. And then you are always directed to include the writer's choice of words and phrases, language features and techniques and sentence forms and this is an eight mark question so let's have a look at the extract the key skills you need for this question are being able to pick out language features and sentence forms and name them you should choose quotes that are relevant to the question you should zoom in on words and phrases to show the examiner that you can closely analyze language you can explain the effect of the language on the reader. And then for the full eight marks, you should write around three paragraphs. So having a look at the extract, I've highlighted some of the features in green that you might like to look at. So we have the phrase beaten hard, repeated. We have the word wearily. We have the lovely descriptive phrase, low horizontal limb of a giant sycamore. And the fact that the limb is worn smooth by the men who have sat on it. The little wind to moving along among the leaves. And the rabbit sat as quietly as little grey sculptured stones. The sound of footsteps, crisp sycamore leaves. The rabbits hurried noiselessly for cover stilted heron labored up into the air and pounded down river the place was lifeless so what techniques did you identify there we can look at the verb use we can look at the repetition of beaten we can look at the personification the low horizontal limb of the giant sycamore we can have the onomatopoeia how sound is used in the extract the wind starts moving, the sound of footsteps, crisp sycamore leaves. We can write about the, the sense of tension. The rabbits hurried noiselessly. The heron flies away. And an example of a question. Natural imagery is used by Steinbeck to create a vivid setting. He tells us that on the sandbanks, the rabbit sat as quietly as little grey sculptured stones. This quote reveals several details about the landscape. Firstly, 
We learn information about the location, which is situated near the shore on sand. Secondly, the simile creates a peaceful atmosphere as the rabbits are noiseless and motionless. The fact that they are compared with sculptured stones suggests that the scene is almost lifeless until the men arrive. Okay, question three. This focuses on the whole of the source. And they tell you that the text that we're looking at is from the opening of the novel. So how has the writer structured the text to interest you as a reader? So this question, the skills focus is on the way the text has been structured. So you could write about what the writer focuses our attention on at the beginning, how and why the writer changes this focus as the source develops, how the extract ends, and other structural features that interest you. Now, this is a question where you need to be careful to only write about the structure. You won't achieve any marks in question three if you talk about the language features. So let's have a look at the extract as a whole. So if we look at the opening sentence, so this is the beginning, a few miles south of Soldad, the Salinas River drops in close to the hillside bank and runs deep and green. So a very, very peaceful rural setting. Does anything change? There's a change in time, highlighted in green, bottom left, evening of a hot day. Does it signify something is going to happen? Yes, it does. Another structural shift. And then from the direction of the state highway came the sound of footsteps on crisp sycamore leaves. And there's another change a few lines on. For a moment, the place was lifeless, so nothing was happening, everything was still. And then two men emerged from the path and came into the opening by the green pool. Then we could focus on the end of the extract. And the characters begin to speak. The small man stepped nervously beside him. Lenny, he said sharply, Lenny, for God's sakes, don't drink too much. So we learn a little bit about the relationship between the characters here. So structure, just to recap, you can write about the beginning, how the, how the focus changes as source develops, how the extract ends, and other structural features that might interest you. For question four then, this is worth 20 minutes, which, why we have, which is why we've allocated more time to answering this. And this question requires you to give your own impressions. You should evaluate. So focus this part of your answer on the second part of the source from line 25 to the end. A student, having read this section of the text, said, the writer skillfully conveys the relationship between the two men. To what extent do you agree? And in your response, you could consider your own impressions of the relationship, evaluate how the writer created these impressions, and then support your opinions with quotations from the text. So let's have a look. So what we really need to do when we're answering question four is think about what does the writer do? So the writer uses quotations, but we also need to look at the language techniques or the writer's methods. So looking at the quotation, Lenny, he said sharply, Lenny, for God's sakes, don't drink so much. And then Lenny continued to snort into the pool. We could focus on the way the adverb sharply has been used. What does George's tone of voice tell us about the relationship between the two men? We could also look at the phrase, for God's sakes. This implies a certain amount of, you know, impatience. We could also look at the verb, you know, continued, don't, snort. You know, giving us an insight into both of the characters and telling us what they are like and what their relationship is. So once we've identified a quotation, we then need to think about why does the writer do this? So we need to think about the effect on the reader. We need to think about 
how we might link this to the question. And we also need to think about, you know, how you might evaluate this. So we might say something like the writer shows that George seems to have taken on the role of Lenny's carer and their relationship seems appears to be similar to that of a parent and child. So here we're thinking about the question. We're thinking about the relationship between the two men. So if we were having a look at the sec this section from the final part of the extract, we could look at the parts that are highlighted in green and we could think about how do these quotations convey the relationship between the two men. Now, question four, the, the focus is on what is the writer trying to do? How does a writer make the reader feel? And to ensure success at this question, this is what you need to focus on. So then finally, question five. Now this is the writing section. As you can see, it is worth 40 marks. You are given two questions. You are going to enter a creative writing competition. The entry will be judged by a panel of people of your own age. Write a description suggested by this picture. So a piece of descriptive writing or a piece of narrative writing. Write the opening part of a story about a place that is remote and isolated. So you get 24 marks for your content and organisation. So what you write and how you organise your writing into sentence lengths and paragraphs. And then 16 marks for technical accuracy, spelling, punctuation and grammar. So let's have a look at an image. So a rural setting. So we could look at this and think, OK, what vocabulary would you use to describe this picture? You need to remember to use at least five different types of punctuation. Remember 16 marks, spelling, punctuation and grammar. Can you use a variety of sentence lengths? Can you start sentences with a verb, adjective or adverb rather than just he or she or I? Also, can you vary your paragraph lengths to create different effects? You know, in this question, you are showcasing everything you have learned during your time at school, you know, and showing the examiner how brilliantly you are at writing creatively. Because remember, 40 marks on this question, it's exactly the same amount of marks as allocated to the whole reading paper. Okay, so I've just given you an overview of paper one. I hope that it's, I hope that you've enjoyed listening to it. Thank you for listening, year nine.